Hi guys, it's Chris here, also known as That Trench Bloke. In this video, I'm going to do things a bit differently than usual, and we're going to talk about stands. The first stand that we are going to see are uh, those ones here, light stand. Okay, heavy professional light stand, and then the pièce de résistance will be in my van. As you can see, this is this black bit here, this black bit there, and this big black bit here. It's all part of a Foba stand. Basically, Foba stand are like the Rolls Royce of camera stand. And I'll tell you more after this. Okay, first, those light stands here. First, let me tell you how I got into ownership of those things. About a year and a half ago, I bought from a government website a set of studio equipment. It was big. There were lots of Broncos, uh, flash light and flash equipment, which I sold uh, a long time ago. And I kept the light stand because originally my idea was to be done that lot, sell everything so that I can have the stand for free. That's something I do often, buy lots so that I can have part of it for free for me. That's how I got some camera for free for my daughter. If you want to know more about that, you can click on the link up there. Um, but hey, yeah, I wanted those, those lights for me because I was able to invest in some light and the light, the light stand that I had at the time were flimsy. Okay, so those ones are not flimsy at all. In fact, it's the opposite. What they are is the Manfrotto Avenger stand and they are made to carry up to 40 kilograms here and they can go up to 3 meters high. They have quite a big footstep, as you can see here, which means that they are very stable, but if you don't have a lot of space in your studio, that's become an issue. They are also very, very heavy. They weigh 13 kilograms, um, which, well, to be honest, it's not that, that heavy, but when you have to move them from place to place, when you have to load them in your car and things like that, it's become a pain. And even folded, they take quite a lot of space. So for all of those reasons, I decided that those are not right for me and I'm going to, to sell them. I've got four of those. And yeah, I paid 427 for the whole lot. <laughs> and I've sold, I think, for something like eight grand, the rest. So I'm all in the money on that thing, but I'm going to sell them anyway. So next here, it's a Manfrotto 608B. That is a lighter stand, stacked less spaces, but it's still a bit too, uh, too big for me. This one came with uh, a giraffe, a big like, crane-like attachment. Unfortunately, uh, that giraffe is stuck, so I'm not going to sell it. I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to sell that one for. If I'm lucky, 100 euros. Those Avenger, I'm going to put them on the market at 150. I hope that I'll get 120 uh, for each of those. So that will be 480 for, for the four of them. So that's quite interesting. Next, what we have here is uh, Manfrotto, Manfrotto Autopol 2. They are basically designed to be wedged between the floor and the ceiling. As you see here, the model I have here has an optional tripod at the bottom, but you can see that there is a, a rubber thing that can be stuck on the floor and you have the same thing at the other end and the mechanism here basically let you exert quite a lot of pressure and it, you can wedge them between the two and they won't move the good thing with that is that you don't when you do that you don't need to have a tripod attachment used at all and they take almost no floor space and they can carry quite a lot of weight. Uh, they are usually, well, they are very useful to um, put some background. And I, I have a pair here that I'm going to sell, and I have a pair that I kept in my basement. 
for that purpose, that's where I hang my, my background in my downstairs studio. And they are great for that. Uh, and they are not really expensive. I think brand new without the option, so 160 euros each. Uh, I'm hoping to get that much for the two with the, with the option. Not easy to post though, because the shortest they'll go is about two meters long. So that will not that is not something I will be able to send through the post. Uh, next, we have what is called a statif, a statif case. So basically, it's a reproduction table. What you do is you put your picture here, or your book, or your uh, oil canvas, or whatever you want, and you attach a camera there, and you can take picture, reproduce basically. Uh, whatever is on the table. It's very well made uh, but I don't think there's much of a market for those sort of things but it's also surprisingly expensive. That thing, brand new, it's 700 euros and that little table and then you see that I think it's something like 200 euros more. So it costs a lot of money. Um, I think I'm going to list it for 250 and see how it goes. I don't think it will be easy to sell. If you don't try, you won't get any money. Uh, if it doesn't sell one day, uh, I'll be in it. But at the moment, I'm going to try to sell it and make some money out of that. Uh, I mean, it's very nice. It's really well done. Uh, I think maybe uh, worst case scenario, one day I might reuse this uh, as a slider for my camera. That will work. Well, you can put your camera here and hop. <laughs> Put your camera there and move it up and down and have movement. So that's uh, that can be cool. But first, I'm going to try to sell it. Let's stop here. The price I gave you in that video you just saw are wrong. So let's have a look together at what the actual price. The main bit of statif it's earth. It's retail here for 1,158 euros. Next, the stand. I did not find the exact stand. Uh, anywhere on the market. I find it but without price because it's out of stock. So that is a, I guess a newer model for it. 1000 euro again which is utter madness for a few bits of metal. But what really annoys me the most is this. Uh, with this set I got those lights, the same light as you can see here. I didn't think much of it. I would have never thought they will retail for more than two grand. But my problem is those lights need to be plugged onto that little device to work and that little device i don't have it and uh, therefore i'm missing quite a lot of money here that was just to show you that there are money sometimes in unexpected places with photo stuff so when it's pro it was good money and now the piece of resistance that foba stand let's have a look at it together so what we have, first thing I'm going to have to move is this. This is weight that move into that column. Second, I'm going to move that base here. And that base is made of cast iron. And I don't know how heavy it is, but it's really, really, really heavy. The rest, it's okay. Those two, especially the stands, are what's scaring me the most. I hope I'm not working for a fail army there. But hey, we'll see. Okay, here we are, we've got the stand, yeah, <laughs> it's up, it's not complete because uh, I'm on my own and I think it's a two-man job to put it together. What is missing here is that inside this column here, there's a weight, a counterweight that basically pull on that cord and that basically counter the weight of that thing. The, the weight is here. That's how it looks like. It's uh, 40 kilograms of steel, basically. That is, without a doubt, <laughs> the most massive camera stand you can think of. Basically, the camera goes here on that little platin. Okay, you screw it here. And this stand allows for all sorts of movement. So, what I have here. But in standard, this attachment here is not there. That is a two and a half thousand dollar attachment. And what it does is that there is a little thing and you can 
basically change orientation of your camera the way you want obviously everything how come it doesn't slide everything slide smoothly here so you can use the stand as a slider but also one of the good features is that you can extend it and put your camera above something else uh, like above a table or uh, can be good you can orient it the way you want uh, you can do lots of things uh, current move up and down smoothly as well so you can use it as a slider or vertical slider if you want to I'm not going to show you that because there's no counterweight okay the stand is cast iron and that is at least 100 kilos and it's there to stabilize the the wall the whole thing okay and there is here there is a button that you can access with your foot and when you press on it it rises the stand and this, there are some wheels underneath and you can move your your stand as it is uh, it's a fantastic fantastic piece of equipment uh, I'll be honest with you since it didn't cost me anything I wish I had like a big studio where I could keep it uh, that is something that I would really love but I'm not going to have such a studio anytime soon so uh, unfortunately I'm going to to sell that but it's a lovely lovely thing it's uh, made in Switzerland uh, they are made to order because they are so expensive and I think most of it is made by hand as well it's a really really lovely thing if you really need to it but as nice as it is $12,000 brand new without tax come on that's a lot lots of money it's too much uh, even for professional I I don't see how you can justify that um, I'm going to put it on the market at 1,900 euros and see how it goes. I'll be happy with 1,500, but I'm not going to sell it for much less than that, that's for sure. It's too nice. And it's so, how can I say, so extreme, so over the top, that it makes it nice. Okay, so now I have to put it back in the garage I, and uh, list it and hopefully I will sell it. I will let you know if I do. That's it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed it um, if you did please press the like button if you didn't like it you can do that don't worry and tell me why okay and uh, I'll see you next time <laughs>